all you living and all you healing and all you loving and all you knowing. Lord, I just want to say thank you. I realize, Lord, I got sense enough to know that you didn't have to do it, but you see something in me and every my days you were on in your name. And Lord, I got sense enough to know that thank you is not enough. I realize that my best is not enough. But Heavenly Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory. Realize, Lord, that you have all power. And Lord, I thank you for that power, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus, that died and rose early Sunday morning with all power, Lord, and then giving us a right to the tree of this life. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Realize, and Lord, I thank you for everything that you continue to do, and thank you for what you've already done. And Lord knows I thank you for right now, Lord. Lord, I don't take this life for granted. I don't take your love for granted. I don't take your mercy for granted because I realize that, Lord, it ain't that I've been so good, but, Lord, you've been just that good to me. And, Lord, I thank you for my church family, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everyone in the sound of my weak voice. And then, Lord, I thank you for the ones that laid down last night and had a mind to come out this morning and somehow just couldn't make it. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We ask you to lift them up. We ask you to strengthen them, Lord. We ask you to continue to keep your arms around them, Lord. And continue to let them know, that, Lord, that you yet live in them, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you for our pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Pray that my pastor say something, Lord, that yes, oh help us as we go down from this place, Lord, that we can let this dying world know that you yet live in the heart of man. Yes, oh then, Heavenly Father, we ask you to keep your arms around his family, Lord, yes, that they may be able to strengthen him yes, as he strengthens us. Heavenly Father, we need him. We need him, Lord. Lord, we just thank you right now in advance, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this worship this morning, Lord. Lord, we realize that somebody was here last night and somebody not here this morning. But Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for just being good to us all, Lord. Thank you for healing us, Lord. Then, Lord, we thank you for deeper shelter, Lord. Lord, we realize, Lord, that this time last week, Lord, he was going through something. But today, Lord, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it could have been worse than what it is, but thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, I ask you to take all the fear from me, Lord. Lord, I ask you to deliver me from all the dirt down, Lord. Let him know, Lord, that you know all about what he's going through. Yes, Let him know, Lord, that you're going to answer each and every last one of his prayers. Yes, so keep your arms around him, Lord. And then, Lord, I ask you to keep your arms around his wife as she continues to strengthen yes, him so and speak to him, Lord. And let him know that whatever he's going through, he got a God that he can call on. Yes, so Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, if I had a thousand tongues, I know thank you wouldn't be enough. But Lord, I thank you in advance for what I know that you're going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for helping us to be a servant that you would have us to be, Lord. As we walk this teaser journey, that we can touch somebody, that we can let somebody know, Lord, that you get it Lord, we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, oh God. Thank you. Amen. God Yes, sir. Smile on me. Yes, sir. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Sing that one for me today. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been.
some little youngsters. Uh, I guess they followed me from the casino is what the police think. But they boxed me in at the red light and put guns up to the car and snatched me out the car and beat me and robbed me and took my gun, my, not, not my gun, I wish I, I'm glad I didn't have a gun. Right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But took my money and my phone uh -huh. and left me laying there. But God, y'all, but God, but God. I thank God for the relationship that I have with him because that's what kept me. He, 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 it wasn't my time to leave here at that moment. So God at that moment strengthened me enough to get back in the car and drive all the way home. We live way out in the Ruskin area. And I drove all the way home, bleeding ferociously. But I got to safety where my wife and my sister could get me to the hospital. And here I am today, able to stand before you and testify that God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I know a day I would have went and got my gun and went looking for them brothers. But at that moment, I forgave them. That's proof. Yes, yes, At that moment, I forgave him. I had daughters. And my family was calling. Let's go look for them. Let, let's do the casino. All that. But God said, be still. Be still. And let me fight your battle. Now, I'm still living with fear at a red light. Anytime I stop at a red light right now, I'm because I'm still terrified from that moment. But I know I got a God who's going to cover me and who's going to keep me safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Thank y'all. Thank you, wife. I really want to say thank you to her. She has truly, truly been a blessing to me through this whole situation. From beginning to end. And I just want to tell her thank you. That's going to conclude our devotion on today. Y'all keep praying. That's why I'm excited. I'm excited every time I come into the house of the Lord. But now God has given me a renew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care if you don't shout with me. Turn the service to the past. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. There is no other. There is no other. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God on today. Let's give the Lord a hand and praise. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I am, I am thanking God for all of the day. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I told you that there are times when the pastor has all the information, but it's not my story to tell. My, my job is to pray. My job is to support. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And when you feel that you can testify of what happened in your life, Amen. That's when God opens the doors for it to be able to do so. Amen. Yes. And I want you to focus on the testimony. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because we, we miss some things because yes. we listen to other things. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen. But I, I want you to I want you to understand the testimony. Amen. I, I want you to understand I was boxed in. Yes. I want you to understand what happened, but what did not happen. I don't want you to 
focus on where I was and where I was coming from. I want you to focus on the box in, and I want you to focus, amen, on the outcome. Because too many times what we don't understand, amen, is that we were boxed in as well. But God came through right in the nick of time, and he opened up a door that brought us out of a trial and tribulation, a situation that could have been deadly. If you were in Sunday school this morning, you would have heard how Jehoshaphat said, you know what, I, was, I, 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 I had some trauma going on in my life. I, I had a near-death experience. But he learned how to go to the Lord in fasting and in prayer. And in fasting and in prayer, God opened up the floodgates. That not only was it a blessing to Jehoshaphat, but it was also a blessing to the nation. So sometimes what happened to us, although it may be traumatizing, it is actually to set up something for other folks who can see how we handle it. Because you heard he said, I could have went this way. I want you to know that you ain't far from what you used to be. Hallelujah. And there's some residual in you right now that would take you right there if the right circumstances would come. Amen. 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 I know y'all holy. Amen. So, so y'all don't understand this. Amen. But but let, let me help you. Amen. I, I'm in agriculture. And in agriculture, uh, my degree was in what they call weed management. So in weed management, what happens is that I learn how to manage weed. So you know how the dandelions in your yard? Yeah. I, not weed. <laughs> manage weeds. <laughs> dandelions. Amen. 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 And, and so, so we would run these trials, and so we would put seeds in our freezer, and then what we would do is come back, Deacon Terry, and see how long those weeds could sit in a freezer, and then you plant them, and would they come back? And so what would happen is that they had some seeds that were 50, 60, 70 years old that had been frozen. But what would happen is that when you put them in the soil under the right condition, they, they would come back up. Amen. And so, so, so sometimes you'll go in your yard and in a year when it's real wet, you'll see things like nuts and you try to figure out, I didn't have nuts last year, but the conditions were right for the nuts Sometimes you'll go out in a dry year and you'll, come, you'll see this stuff called purslane and, and it's these little things that stick up and they look like little uh, 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 plants and they sit flat to the ground. And so what would happen is that when you look at them, you say, I didn't have those last year either. What I'm trying to say is that the stuff that was in the ground has always been in the ground. It's the conditions that will bring forth the stuff to let you see what's there. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you got some residual stuff that has been buried. And if the conditions are right, they will come up in and out of you. So that's why some folks say, oops, I don't know where that came from. It was in you. It was just the conditions that brought it forth. Amen. Amen. So, so, so on this morning, amen, be mindful, amen, that, that, that we are far from where we were, but we're still far from where we need to be. And God is growing us. He's grooming us. He is preparing us. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, and they tell your neighbor, neighbor, God is preparing me. He's preparing me for my future. Amen. A amen, amen. And sometimes to prepare you for your future, amen, you got to get rid of some of your stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to talk about watch them again today, amen. A a amen, amen, because it's going to be a little bit personal today, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, amen. I want to share a couple of announcements with you, amen. A couple of announcements we want to share with you. First and foremost, we want to welcome all of our visitors this morning. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I say visitors, amen, but I'm also, I got this expectation thing, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So I'm saying future members. That's what I say, amen. Yeah. So, so we want to welcome all of our future members, amen. Yeah. Yeah. And those who are visiting us on today, we are so glad that you all came back to see us, amen, to be with us on today. Those who are online, perhaps join us for the first time, we welcome you on today as well. Uh, I want to share with you all also that any activities, any programs, uh, Pastor Carol, amen, is, is not the program committee. <laughs> okay. Amen. The congregation does the programs. Amen. Right. Pastor Carol supports your vision. Amen. Right. Here's what I need you to do. Any programs in 2024, amen, I need you to give me dates, I need you to give me times, and I need you to start working on them. Why did I say start working on it? Because I don't want us working on a program for July in June. That's right. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want you to plan. Amen. But I need you to get that information to me no later than the 15th of February. Amen. That's a good day. Amen. Amen. So, so, so by the 15th of, Jan of February, I need you to have, if you're scheduling something, amen, whatever you look at, and if the Lord has told you, let me, let me, let me share. Uh, if the Lord has said, Pastor, the Lord told me to tell you that we ought to do this. Guess who the committed person is? Yeah. You, because the Lord showed it to you. Amen? Amen. 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 But, 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 but we want to make sure we get everything planned out and ready, amen, uh, so that we, uh, we we get around to uh, Thanksgiving time. We got our turkeys. We got our baskets. We got all that ready. We got our residual for Christmas. Uh, by the time we get to uh, September and October, we got our harvest fest ready to go, amen. By the time we get to July, amen, if it's not too, too terribly hot, amen, we can have our neighborhood uh, 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 fest as well. So by the time we get to May, when it's the Ursus anniversary, the Ursus are ready. By the time we get to March, it's the choir anniversary, the choir is ready. Amen. I'm just saying, let's get it all planned out, get it to dates, and let's get this stuff started so that, amen, we put together a quality program that is for God. Amen. 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 I, need to, I told you, in 2024, we operate in what? Excellence. Amen. A a amen. And part of the excellence is teaching it. Amen. And part of teaching it is saying, here's what we need to do so that we do things in a more excellent way. Amen. amen. Uh, with that said, amen. Sister Rashida also is working on one of our other outreach projects, amen, which is our trash bag sale. They will start February the 1st. Amen. So February the 1st, amen, is when they say uh, they, the, 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 the fundraiser will start and it will go through, amen. Uh, uh, the last day to turn in, the last day to turn in, the last day to turn in, I'm saying it again, the last day to turn in is March the 3rd, amen? A amen. So Sister Rashida already has the sheets, so you can see her back there. She has the sheets, amen. And, and let's do a phenomenal job, amen? A amen. If you don't want to take a sheet, amen, then buy some bags. A amen. All of it goes back to us. Amen. It goes to help our youth. It helps us to do other projects that we're doing here at the church. Amen. Now, it does not fund things that the church is supposed to fund. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. If we got to buy a doorknob, it don't fund buying the doorknob. Amen. We got a building fund for that. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so the things that the church is supposed to fund, the, the church funds those. Amen. Uh, but this helps us with some of those other activities. Amen. That sometimes we don't have residual funds to do that, and then we can use this to do so. Amen. It's been a blessing because it allowed us to take the kids to the zoo one year. Amen. All the way to St. Louis and by the bus. Amen. Uh, and, and, and so it's allowed us to do some things, amen, to do outreach, in-reach, amen, uh, because in-reach is just as important as outreach. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to outreach, amen. We should outreach, amen, but you got to also in-reach. Because there's some things sometimes happening within our families, amen, that we need to be working with our families to help them through the processes, amen? Amen, amen, amen. Y'all gonna have to get on board with him, amen? Amen, he praised the Lord, amen. He's looking up, amen, in the sky, amen. Everybody else like, Pastor, okay, come on, Pastor. Amen, hallelujah, amen, amen. Also, uh, we want to thank all of our, uh, uh, we want to celebrate all of our birthdays this month, amen. Uh, Brother Michael McCall back there, uh, he was January the 2nd, amen. Sister Wendy Bashir uh, was Jan uh, January the 4th, amen. I know I missed somebody. Uh, Brother uh, Mike Lawrence Brown the 3rd, his was on the 17th. Mother Shears was on the 18th, amen. Mother Bells is on the 29th. Did I miss somebody? Did I miss somebody? Did I miss somebody? Brother Miles, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, the 7th. Amen. Ooh, Lord. Okay. All right. Amen. It was on the 7th. Amen. Do I miss anybody else? I know Nadia back there. She was on the 19th. Amen. Anybody else? 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 Am I missing anybody? Am I missing anybody? Am I missing anybody? Amen. Oh, woo. Hallelujah. Wave your hand, Sister Carol. Amen. Sister Carol, birthday. It's on the 23rd. Amen. A -a Amen. She'll be 32 years young. Amen. Oh, I'm in church. Uh, let me stop that. Amen. 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 She will be a beautiful age. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're looking forward.
forward, amen, uh, to the 23rd, amen, amen. Um, and, and a few of the ladies on yesterday, amen. Sister Cleaver, whoo, thank you so much, amen. A amen. Sister Cleaver, amen, and a few of the ladies took her out to lunch on yesterday. I heard they had a grand time, amen. Uh, it was a marvelous time, amen. I, 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 I thought she liked Big Biscuit, amen. Uh, but she come back talking about Union Hill. So guess what? Looks like we got a new place we can have to go to, amen. Amen, amen. But we're grateful, amen. And, and sometimes it's those type of fellowships, amen, just a time that's spent together uh, uh, to show appreciation, amen, uh, that makes the difference, amen, in our lives. So we are grateful, amen, for those who went. Uh, we're grateful for those who may have had a desire to go, just could not go, amen. Uh, but we want Sister Carol to know, amen. Sister Carol, Sister Carol, Sister Carol, my boo, my honeydew, my honey dip, amen. Uh, 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 my babe, amen. I love you, amen, amen, amen. A amen. And we're looking forward, amen, to celebrate with you, amen, this, this momentous amen occasion. Amen. God is good. Amen. A amen. Amen. With that said, amen. Y'all shout out to all the people. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. I think that's all on the announcements this morning. Amen. Uh, uh, I will be coming from Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Uh, verses 28 through 31 today. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. Amen. 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 We do have a few people who joined us online. God bless them as well on today. Amen. There's a few who will be watching us. Amen. Uh, through uh, uh, our online service as well. Uh, and so we'll just continue, amen, to provide what we can, when we can. Uh, when it won't work. Amen? Yeah. And it is the way it is. You know technology. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So we thank y'all. At this time, we're going to ask the Sister Cantrell and I pray the worship team will come and give us a selection. Amen. As we prepare. Oh, okay. Amen. <laughs> amen. I'm looking on my left. Amen. Let's see if go this way. Amen. Amen. As we prepare, amen, to worship the Lord in song. Amen. Let's amen. give the Lord a hand pray. Amen.
In your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So I want to be born. Yourselves 
and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Uh -huh. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to stand in the house of the Lord one more Sunday morning. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, for us, Lord, to stand in the house one more Sunday morning. Uh, the Lord, that we may teach your word as well as hear your word, Father. Uh, I pray now, Father, that as a teacher, Lord, that you decrease me. Yes, uh, that, God. Lord, none of me and all of you will come forth, Lord, that I will speak as you say speak. That I will share as you say share. Uh, Lord, that I will admonish as you say admonish, Father. That I will correct as you say correct. Uh, that, Lord, that I will stay, Father, the course as you called me to on today. And then I pray, Father, for those who are listening, Father, that they have a hearing ear. Uh, one, Father, that is intent on obeying, Father, what is heard. Uh, Lord, we pray now, Father, that you would uh, help them, Father, to see you, Father, in totality. Uh, that, Lord, even when things uh, hurt and we have to say, ouch, that we understand is for the benefit, Father, of our growth. Uh, we pray now, Father, for strength, strength, Lord, in this time when, Father, the enemy is going to and fro trying to weaken us on every hand. Uh, we ask now, Father, that you would search the hearts of your people on today, Lord. If there's anything that they came here with this morning, uh, Lord, that is challenging them in their spirit, we pray now in the name of Jesus, yes, oh God. Uh, through the Holy Spirit, Father, that you encourage them to release it right now. Uh, that, Lord, as you speak on today, Father, that they release even more. That, that, that when they walk out of here, Father, uh, the baggage that they brought in, Father, they will leave it here at the altar. That they may walk out of here, Father, free and clear and ready, Father, to serve. Uh, we pray now, Father, for this dying world. For yes, we recognize God. that the enemy yes, goes God. to and fro, seeking whom we may be able to devour. But, Lord, you share with us that you come that we may have life, that we may have it more abundantly. So, Lord, we pray now, Father, for a spirit of joy, a spirit of expectation, a spirit, Father, of service, and that, Lord, that we may serve you in spirit and in truth, and that, ultimately, Father, you get the benefit of us doing those things, Father, that it may be a help to the kingdom. Uh, we pray now, Father, that you strengthen every person here. It's in Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name. We pray and give you thanks. Let every heart say amen. 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 Amen, amen. amen. again. I'd like to use for a topic this morning as we're coming from uh, Acts chapter 20, 28 through 31. Watch them part three. Amen. Watch them part three. Watch them part three. Watch them part three. Uh, as a pastor, amen, uh, I have the privilege, amen, and sometimes the task of, of, of sharing with you, amen, what thus says the Lord. Uh, it is a privilege in that, amen, as we are sharing. Uh, uh, I get to share with you those things which can bring life. The task sometimes, amen, is that I have to share it in a manner that does not always sound good or feel good, amen. Uh, 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 I, 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 I take this very seriously, amen. Yes. Uh, I take it seriously, amen, because I realize, amen, that your lives are serious. What That's God right. is trying to do in and through your lives is serious, amen. And, and the way that I handle those things, amen, can make the difference between you being a winner or you being a loser. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. How many want to win? How many want to win? Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, 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 so when we do it, amen, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, 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 play with this, amen. I don't, I don't see it, amen, as a... Uh, a chore. I think I shared with the Bible study class that uh, how Paul said that he did not do it in a manner that was a chore for him. He actually enjoyed doing what he did, amen, although he recognized that everybody didn't want to hear it, amen. Uh, even now, amen, everybody don't want to hear it, amen. Even now, amen, we will get up on a Sunday morning, amen, we will put on our Sunday best. We will come to church, amen, and then we will leave saying, I didn't want to hear that from Pastor. I, 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 amen. It is amazing to me, amen, that, that we can still walk away, amen, with this feeling of I don't want to hear that 
uh, when we will listen to any and everything during the course yeah. of the week. Amen? Amen. And, and how much junk went in your ears this week? How much stuff, amen, did you listen to that did not add any value to your life? How much stuff, amen, have you seen, amen, or participated in this week, amen, that if you looked at it in the bigger scope of the picture, amen, you recognize that it was not helpful for you, but it was actually detrimental to you as well. So when we look at that, amen, with, with this understanding, amen, that, that Paul, Paul is a, a, a individual who has a very different perspective on, on church, amen. First and foremost, Paul was one who knew the word. Paul was one who grew up in the church. Paul was one who taught. Paul was one who understood. Paul is one uh, who was going after those who were of the way, Christians, yeah. believers, amen. Uh, he was operating in this in Saul. He was doing so, amen, on his road, on the way to Damascus, where God had to have an experience with him, Deacon Shelton, where he opened up his eyes and reminded him, amen, that I am yet God. Uh, and, 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 and so, Paul, as you are doing what you are doing, I, 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 I like your zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. Yeah. And so as a result of that, amen, I've had to correct you, and I'm correcting you, so I'm going to send you to Damascus to see a man, a man who don't want to see you. And you really don't want to see him, amen. So matter of fact, we're going to just go and get that out of the way. I'm going to put some scales over your eyes so you ain't got to look at his face, amen. I'm trying to help you because sometimes when you look at their face, amen, they have a greater effect on you, amen. Uh, when you are watching them with your eyes, it's hard for you to sometimes get away. So sometimes what happens is God got to cover your eyes so you can't see them watching you, amen. When I was growing up, there was a song by this guy named Rockwell. He said, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 and when you think about it from that perspective, you got to keep it in your mind that somebody is uh -oh, <laughs> always watching you. Amen. So, so when I proclaim and say that I'm a child of God, my actions have to reflect of being a child of God because everybody who's watching me, amen, are looking at me to see if I'm going to stumble of God. Right. So Paul, Paul, Paul here, amen, understands that he's getting ready to leave the church, this particular church, and as he's getting ready to leave them, he says, I, I need to share some things with you because I want you to be prepared for the rush of foolishness that's getting yeah. ready to come. Yeah, right. I say that to you all because there's some foolishness on this way. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I'm trying to help you understand this, but there's some foolishness that's getting ready to come your way. There's some foolishness that's getting ready to come in our world. There's some foolishness that's getting ready to come in our nation. There's some foolishness that's going to come in your neighborhood. You need to be aware that the foolishness is on the way. Yes, oh God. Yes. But because of who we serve, we ain't got to be worried about the foolishness. So, 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 so I can see the foolishness, Brother Glenn, but I'm not worried about the foolishness because I got warning that the foolishness is on the way. I go to Brother Glenn's house and, and I, 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 he might still have it, but, but before you can get in the driveway to the Brother Glenn, got got uh, uh, his ring on like a tree. So, so he knows somebody coming up the driveway, amen? And, and I say that, amen, because you got to know when the enemy is coming before the enemy is up on you. Because when the enemy is up on you, it's too late. So you need to be watching, amen, while it's day. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the latter part of Acts chapter 20, Paul calls the elders of Ephesus. He says, he says, I need y'all to meet me. And Paul is in Melitus, and he's there. And he says, Sister Carol, he said, I need y'all to meet me in Melitus because I got some stuff that I need to share with you. Amen. And so upon their arrival, Paul begins what he calls a farewell speech. And it's directed at encouraging them to continue to do the work. See, you got to understand that even after a, a pastor or a leader or a teacher leaves, you still got to be able to do the work. Because the work is not contingent upon the people. The work is contingent upon the place. Do you not think, amen, that McDonald's going to stop serving burgers because somebody decides one day they're going to quit? They'll get somebody else, amen? But the workers got to keep flowing, amen? And so the church got to keep flowing even in the midst of everybody or those who decide they don't want to work no more, can't work no more, and decide to leave. But the work amen. still has to go forward. Right. So, so, so Paul, what Paul does is he begins to recount uh, uh, the work that he had done among them. So he's telling them these things that I've done. Uh, he then begins to speak of his future, uh, share with 
him the places that he needs to go in to finish off the work that God has for him. He then shares that this would probably be the last time. So this is probably be the last time that I talk to y'all. This is the last time I'm going to see y'all. The last time that you want to have a direct interaction with me. It might not be that he could not write a letter to them, but there's something about having personal experience with yeah. individuals yeah. that a text that a phone call will not do. That's right. So Paul is saying that I'm here with you in person, and as I'm here with you in person, I'm going to share with you because what happens is that there's some. I, I, I said it, but 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 I can see something in your eyes that I can't always see in your voice. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. That's right. That's right. A -a Amen. Amen. Right. I, I I can say I can say on the phone, how you doing? And you say I'm fine. Now, if I have spent time with you, though, I can also hear the reflection of the, of the distinct tones in your voice yeah. to know that you are not telling me the truth. Right, yeah. right, right. But it's something about being in a person's presence and saying, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And you're looking at them, and all of a sudden, that person now freezes and begins now to start looking in a manner and say, I think I'm fine, but I ain't fine. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, if you want to get involved in it, then you'll dig a little further. If you don't want to get involved, you just go on to the next person. Be like, you know what, I ain't getting ready to get involved in that. Amen. But it's something about shepherding. It's something about being children of God that does not allow us to just walk away from individuals when we know that they're going through something. All right. All right. It ought to actually compel us to actually want to become more involved. Yeah. So, so it's hard for me, amen, as a pastor, when it comes down to folks that say they don't want to get involved in the church. Well, yeah. How is it you don't want to get involved in the work, but you're a part of the church? Yeah. My, my, my. Yeah. That's kind of like the hand saying, I don't want to reach for the juice in the refrigerator after you walk over there with your feet and legs. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Y'all think about that for a moment. Yeah. Amen. He shares that, uh, again, this will be the last time, and he declares his innocence before God. So Paul said, basically, in 26 and 27, he said, I am free from hurting or harming anybody else. He said, he said I have done all my dirt, and, and now the Lord has freed me, so I'm coming to you with a clear conscience. Uh -huh. And it's something about it when you can clear your conscience. Anybody got anything you need to free your conscience of today? Hallelujah. I'm saying get rid of it. Amen. Yeah, That's yeah. a good day to do it. Amen. Release it. Amen. Amen. He says, he said, my heart is free. My conscience is free. And so after 27, it's after this point that the text of this morning finds the beginning. So what happens is that Paul now shares a need for them to develop a very deep sense of awareness of the instructions that he's getting ready to give them and the specific individuals that is directed towards. Amen. He instructs them to take heed to three specific entities. Amen. To ensure the effectiveness and the responsible spread of the word of God. We have to watch these individuals because they prevent us from uh, spreading the word of God. All right, right. See, 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 see. We ought to be good news people. Yeah. Amen. You are a newspaper carrier. Amen. So every day that you wake up, you ought to want to share Jesus Christ with somebody. Yeah. And, and regardless of what you go through, amen, amen, in regardless of what we face, we begin to say what? Lord, thank you. Yeah. And then that becomes our testimony. Yeah. And that also becomes front page, amen, yeah. so that now I can share with the world that God has protected me, covered me, kept me, amen. Yeah. And as a result of that, I want the whole world to know how blessed I am and how much I thank you, oh. even though it didn't look good. And how you live. Amen. These elders represented the next line of defense and the appropriate spreading of the good news. This morning in Sunday school, we talked about how, how Jehoshaphat could have sent 300,000 men. Yeah. And, and he had them, amen, who were able to, because the Bible talks about them being well trained. Amen. See, when you go in a fight, you don't need no wimps. Well, well. Well, you put, they, they don't put wimps on the front line in the, in, in the army. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Matter, matter of fact, amen, when, when in the military, amen, the real people go out and do the work before the other people even show up. You got these uh, Navy SEALs and you got Rangers and all these individuals and they're specially trained and it's like six of them. Yeah. 
He said, because you got blood on your hand. So he, he, he allowed that task to go to Solomon. And when Solomon begins to build the temple, Solomon, as the Lord is getting ready to fill the temple, he asked a question. He says, Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon prays for wisdom to be able to lead God's people. So we see that there was a distinct difference between a father who had a, God, a, a heart after God's own heart and the son also having it. But God said, you messed up even when you have this heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and so what happens, amen, is moments, moments that disqualify us. It ain't seasons. Sometimes it's moments. Your temporary moment. Yes, yes. Me deciding to do something in a moment to change the trajectory of my life forever. Yes. How many folks may be in prison right now that, that wouldn't be in prison that had a thought? One more second about what they was getting ready to do. Right. How, how, how many folks, amen, might not have had a DWI if they had to say, you know what, I'm going to give somebody the keys, I'm going to call an Uber, I'm going to call a taxi. How many people, amen, might not have had some of the heartache and, and, and trials and tribulation in relationship if you had to just say, I'm going to stop messing with them because they ain't no good, amen. I'm just talking about one moment yeah. in time. One moment can disqualify us, amen, amen. So Peter would provide similar guidance even in 1 Peter of the importance of men of God leading with intention in verses 1 through 4. Because remember, he urges the, 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 the elders, he tells them uh, uh, that they need to uh, 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 be eyewitnesses of the suffering of Christ. He said, y'all need to share with people that Christ suffered. And not only did he suffer, but we suffer. Yeah. Anybody go through anything? Anybody going through something now? Anybody trusting God in the midst of what you're going through? Anybody realize that it ain't nothing that you can do about it, but God can do all things but fail? Hallelujah. Amen. And so what we understand is that, that from this, he reveals that the shepherd and the God, uh, that they are to shepherd and God and protect the flock of God exercising oversight. So this word oversight deals with the same thing as overseer. So what an overseer does is a person who actually sees everything and they oversee those individuals and situations that are under their God. So as believers, we should be overseers, but we shouldn't be overlookers. In other words, amen, when you see wrong, you shouldn't overlook it. You address the wrong. Why? Because the wrong, amen, can lead somebody else down the wrong path. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Amen. A amen. So Paul would point to their calling and the role of the Holy Spirit had in appointing the elders. He said, the Holy Spirit has appointed you to be overseers of the flock. And, and the word overseer is in alignment with the term pastor, uh -huh. uh, which is also in alignment with the term bishop. And so, so my deacons know from 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 7, it talks about the qualifications of a, de of a pastor, but then it also goes on and talks about the qualifications of a deacon, but it also deals with this concept of being an overseer. So an overseer puts in those things necessary to not let anything slip through. That's right. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So when we serve God, it should be willingly. Yeah. Anybody forced to serve? I don't want nobody to feel like they're forced to come. Anybody forced to come to Greenwood? I don't want nobody forced to come to Greenwood. Amen. A amen. We want to be willing servants, and we want to be free from the influence of sinful entities. Amen. And so what happens is that the day will come when those who do it for real and those who are faking will come to an appointment time with God. And when God comes forward, amen, uh, he's going to address it because not every person that says, Lord, Lord, is going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, so we want to make sure that my Lord, Lord is the right Lord that I'm calling for. That's amen. Right. Right. A -a amen. So we have to remain vigilant in watching ourselves because we are still wrapped in sinful flesh. Oh, yeah. amen. There's some stuff you still like to do. Well, you might be suppressing it right now, and we hope that the word you got enough word in you to keep it down. Amen. But, 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 but while you're here on earth, you still gonna struggle with some stuff. Anybody struggle with stuff? Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Yeah. You struggle with some things. Amen. 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 Sometimes you just ask that question, Lord, I'm serving and I'm doing, Lord, all that you ask me to do, but still this stuff keep coming my way. Lord, why me? Amen. And I'm just talking real talk here. Amen. Amen. And so, so what happens is that we have to be mindful that sometimes, amen, life happens. Amen. But we got to understand who's the giver and the keeper of life. And when 
I understand that him and the people in life, that life don't bother me no more because I know that God is able to do all things but faith. Amen. So, so this is not my, my so, so, so we have to be vigilant. We got to watch ourselves because of, of this sinful flesh. It's a warning that even Jesus was shared with the disciples who were with him when he went to the garden of the city. Remember, Jesus was in there praying. Jesus come out and they sleep. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I done brought y'all with me, and y'all supposed to be watching. That's right. That's but y'all right. out there sleep. Yeah. So Jesus says in verse 20, uh, 41, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He said, he said, y'all sleeping now, y'all tempted to sleep, go on sleep, sleep on. Amen. He said, but I need you to understand that there's going to be a time when you're going to have to watch and pray. Amen. Uh -huh. Because sometimes the spirit is willing, yeah. but the flesh is weak. Yeah. So, so, sometimes I want to do it, Deacon McBride, amen. I want to do it the right way, but my flesh starts doing something, amen. I, I, I want to serve, amen, but the moment that I want to serve, my flesh starts saying, you can't do that. You didn't do it like somebody else did it before you. Stop worrying about predecessors. That's all right. Stop worrying about folks who did it in the church before you, amen. God raises up a new season of people for a new time, amen. And so sometimes, amen, the way that you gonna do it is the way that needs to be done in this particular season. Amen. Amen. Which leads to the second point, amen, is that, that, that not only are we to watch ourselves as a flock, uh, but they were to watch out for the flock because of outside danger. So he's telling these aunt, uh, this, uh, uh, elders, he said, y'all watch, watch the flock because there's some, some outside influences. It's the dims. That's the other ones, the dims that you got to watch on the outside. Amen. So in verse 20, uh, 29, Paul shifts and now confirms that I know that after I'm gone, false teachers like ferocious wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. There was no doubt in Paul's mind, Sister Shelton, that, 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 that the church was going to be faced with some stuff once he left. Amen. Paul said, I'm leaving. Uh, Paul said, I'm getting ready to leave. I done taught you what I need to teach. I done done this for many days and nights. I did it to the point where I'm in tears because sometimes it felt like y'all yeah, wasn't getting the lesson and I'm crying and I'm saying, Lord, please let them get it because I realize that there's some wounds on the horizon and they're going to come and they're going to try to mess them up. Paul said it's coming. He knew it was coming. Amen. And he knew this, baby. Amen. He knew they were coming because they wasn't uh, afraid to attack while he was there. That's all right. See, 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 sometimes we're like, oh, I don't know what's getting ready to happen. A amen. The problem is, what's already happening? <laughs> and when I can already see the stuff happening, and, and, and then when, when, when I think I done got past it, and you got to know that it's just on the outside waiting for an opportunity to come back in. That's that whole weed scenario I gave y'all earlier. Amen. And what we understand is that the word of God is rich. Amen. And, and Hebrews 4.12 reminds us that it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. For the word of God is living and active. It's full of power. Amen. And what we have to understand is that God's word will sustain us and reveal things to us if we are spiritually in tune. Amen. With what he's sharing, whereby giving us the ability to discern spirits. So I got to be able to discern spirits because they're always moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 False teachers. False teachers. They are ferocious in their attack. And they will compare Sister Carol to wolves. Yeah. yeah. Sister Queen, I, I, I looked at that for a moment. I said, well, why would Paul use wolves? And, and, and why would he talk about how ferocious they are? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and then I got to thinking about all my nature shows and, and how every time you see wolves in a pack, they are. They, they ain't playing. And, and, and if they pick a part of bone on a buffalo with precision, you know, you know, you know, some of y'all, you know, I, I talk, I'm asking people now who eat, eat chicken and still got meat on the bone. I'm like, hold on, it's still some meat there. Yeah. We, got, we got to clean that up. Amen. 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 I talk about it. He's like, well, Pastor, are you ferocious? Uh, I, I just know that there's some meat on there. Amen. So I gotta still get the rest of it. Amen. But, 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 but wolves, here's what you got to understand about wolves. Wolves are intelligent. So he used that, uh, Brother Mike, because wolves are intelligent. Often, often the wolf can avoid being captured, amen, because they calculate the risk and the rewards of everything that they do before they do it. Amen. Ooh, hello, believers. Amen. You have to look at the risk and the rewards before anything that you do, amen, but, but I ain't calling you wolves, amen. Uh, amen. But he, he said, he said, and if the time is not right, 
what a wolf will do is the wolf will leave and come back at another time. Amen. So the wolf can see that there's sheep in the pen and want to go in and get the pen, but he heard the dog. And he know that it's one dog, and then he can hear the sound of another dog. And so he said, because I cannot calculate the distance between me, the sheep, and the dog, it might not be the right time. But the next time he comes around, he doesn't hear the dog barking because the sheep are a little closer to the fence. And if they're closer to the fence, he can reach in and grab them before the dog. All right. So wolves, wolves are intelligent. Wolves are also cunning. They, they often track their prey way longer than the time it takes for them to actually catch it. Uh -huh. In other words, there's days when, when the wolf will sit there and, and he's looking at the herd of buffalo and he's waiting because he's looking for the one who is the weakest out of the group. And sometimes people say, well, it's the baby that's the weakest and it ain't always the baby that's the weakest. Sometimes it's the elder that's the weakest. And so the wolf is looking not only to take the baby, but sometimes to take the elder. And so we got to understand that we know that the wolves are that's why you got to be careful. Hey Amen. We know phone calls coming in to the elderly and telling them about this and that. And you push a button and you lose everything. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about wolves. Yeah. Wolves are persistent. Yeah. And, 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 and they're so persistent that they, they, they work in a pack. And so what would happen, amen, uh, 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 brother Bashir, is that, that, that when one wolf is the lead wolf, that one wolf will chase the elk. And then when that wolf get tired, then the wolf that was in the back will actually run up to the front. And then now he takes over the front of the, uh, of the chase, and the other one falls back. And they do this until they hunt down or catch their prey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I? And not only are they persistent, but they have the tendency or the, the, the ability to actually take down prey that's much larger than them. Mm -hmm. And the reason they can take down prey much larger than them is because they work as a team. Right. So I'm trying to get you to understand that when the attacks on the outside come, they work it as a team. So it comes in waves, and folks are trying to get in and mess up the whole thing that God's been teaching through the disciples and now, so that we will be messed up. So you gotta watch them. All right. You gotta watch them. You gotta watch them. You gotta watch them. Gotta watch them. Amen. Uh, uh, but here's what I do understand: of all those things I told you about the wolf, the wolf is not a good imitator. Because the wolf can come with sheep clothing, but the wolf always gonna show his teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is that we ain't looking for it. Huh. Hallelujah. Amen. See, 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 the wolf is always speaking, but you gotta be able to discern the wolf's language. So that when the wolf is speaking, amen, you gotta know that he wasn't bad. He wasn't saying bad. Actually, he was growling. It was but you couldn't hear that because maybe the wolf had you fooled into thinking that the wolf was your friend. All right. So, 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 what they are will eventually show up. And what you find out is that their hunger often triggers unreasonable behaviors. Mm -hmm. So, so, so when they are hungry enough to attack you, amen, they are bold enough to do it. And when they are bold enough to do it, now they're trying to take you out. So, so now their behavior is unreasonable. That's why he called them ferocious. Yeah. Because ferocious things don't think about what they're doing. They just do what they do. do yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul's departure would cause them to try to seize the opportunity to unravel everything that Paul had taught. So when it comes to outside influences, we got to be most watchful. Their influence can be even greater because they represent opportunities of convenience and time exposure. For example, our children can be influenced by friends and even TV and social media because the greater part of their day is spent with those things. So by the time a child is maybe two or three, what do you do? You put this iPad in front of them, and the iPad becomes the babysitter. Well, well, well. So then we wonder why the child can't talk. Because the child has not had any human interactions. It only has had gabba gabba. So it know every cartoon, but it don't know a conversation. And, 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 and likewise, with our older children, what happens is that they spend most of their time at school with their friends and those influences. So we have to make sure that we're teaching as much as we can when we have them to overcome the stuff that they're going to come around because that's the stuff that influences them. Now, y'all all happy and good because I said kids. 
But let me help y'all some, amen. Right. Uh, because because sometimes, amen, uh, 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 the enemy don't just attack the kids. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and, and see, the enemy's attack uh, uh, comes on our self-esteem, mm -hmm. comes on our worth, yeah. comes on our appearance, and our needs, amen, to, to lead, uh, and, 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 and our needs. And so what happens is that it leads to risque behavior. So, so sometimes what happens, amen, is that your coworkers and your outside pursuers understand that you are now got no self-esteem. Yeah. They understand that you feel like you don't have no worth. Mm -hmm. They understand that you might not feel you pretty. They might understand that you think you got needs. And so what they do is they start to now present the very thing that you think you lack. Mm, that's all right. All right. Mm. And they do it long enough because they're wolves. Mm. Yeah. And the wolves is persistent. Okay. So, 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 so he might know that you, you might be hard on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but he'll tell you that you ain't. Because, <laughs> because it, because he'll get what he wants. That's right. And once he get what he wants, then you try to figure out why he left you. Yeah. But he told me this. Uh -huh. And he said this. I'm just, I'm just showing you. And, and so you got to be, you be mindful that, that friend and folks outside in the union can be dangerous. That's right. Yeah. You got to be understanding that hanging out with individuals and new groups of friends out of the blue that your significant other don't know about is dangerous activity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You got to be uh, careful about uh, uh, discrediting the concerns of those individuals they bring those things up, amen, because sometimes what happens is that the enemy said they tripping. He said, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. The enemy said, they tripping. And so now you feel, I can do what I want to do because I'm grown. You know how many grown folks been in divorce court? Over small stuff. It started small and it grew. Why? Because they didn't check it, Amen. Amen. So, so all this amounts to red flags, and the wolves know. The wolves know the red flags. Amen. However, I'm getting ready to close because y'all look like y'all have had enough. I, I pray it's good to y'all because it's good to me. I'm helping you. Amen. Amen. However, Paul, Paul didn't stop there. Paul, Paul says, you got to watch yourself. You got to watch for the church, the flock. You got to watch the flock because there's outside influences, amen, who can come from the outside trying to get in. He said, but the last group you need to watch out for is the group that's inside the church. Mm -hmm. Mama. All right. Oh. Mm -hmm. What? You mean some folk in church that's trying to mess up church? Amen. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Oh. All the time. It, it, it's, it's amazing. Certainly, you know, you got folks you cry with. You, you know, sing the struggle, work with you, worship with you, you help and even receive help from them. Hey, Amen. Uh, 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 you, you would think that I ain't got to watch them. Right. Amen. Why got to watch them? Why got to keep my eyes on them? Hey, Amen. You got to keep your eyes on them because they still flesh. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 and again, yeah. they look for what? Opportunity. Hey, Amen. So yeah. Paul shares in verse 30 even from among your own selves, men will rise, speaking perverse and distorted things to draw away the disciples after themselves. So what Paul reveals is that those who have been taught appropriately could be enticed to seek status for themselves by splitting the flock and causing it to pick sides. Mm -hmm. So you have individuals who are in the church, amen, and so the message in the church ought to be a unified message yeah. from the pastor all the way to the back door. Mm -hmm. So what is spoken should be consistent, amen, so that if pastor's speaking, if the deacons ought to be speaking. If the deacons speaking, then the congregation should be speaking. What happens, though, of the danger fall is when one person decides to get off script. And so now they begin to lead their own little congregation. That's right. Even in the church. Yeah. yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 So Paul, he, 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 he reveals that they are enticed. The enticement of power has messed up a lot of churches. That's all right. Because what you have to understand is that all things are given to us by God. So even our ability to teach and to do what we do is what? Based upon what God gives us. Amen. Amen. And so, so it's not for me. It's for the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. And since it's for the glory of God, I can't get caught up in my stuff. Amen. Amen. Because I realize I'm just a cog on the wheel. Yeah. C-O-G. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm just a cog on the wheel. And as a result of me being a cog on the wheel, if I leave here, I cannot think in my mind that Greenwood
world is not going to continue to prosper. That's right. That's right. It's folks that made up in their mind, if I left tomorrow, this church ain't going to be no good no more. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Mama, mama. The message is no longer rooted in glorifying God, but gaining popularity through self-promotion. If it's about you getting attention, you're in the wrong business. Yes. If, if you seek out self-gratification by people following you and not the word, you're in the wrong business. That's right. yeah. That's right. Because what will happen is you'll get just what you got right here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The believer's role is never about doing what we do to draw attention to ourselves. So it's not about us. Everything we do should be about sharing Jesus Christ with the world. So out of my mouth should be Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of my mouth, when I have something, is the Lord provided for. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the Lord's that he's allowing me to be a steward over. Yeah, yeah. It's not about us, yeah, amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's about expressing the good news about his birth, his burial, his resurrection, and what it means to us regarding eternal salvation. It, 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 it converts, or converts try to make this a point among Paul and some of his contemporaries. Uh, 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 if you go to 1 Corinthians 1, there was a group of individuals who had what they called contentions. They were arguing mm -hmm. over who was the better preacher. Paul, mm -hmm. Peter, or Paulus. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And Paul... I gotta read this to you real quick. Paul, 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 Paul addresses this. He said, he said, now this I say that every one of you said, I am of Paul and I'm of Apollos and I'm of Cephas and I'm of Christ. So they all talking about who they are. He said, is Christ divided? Mm -hmm. He said, if we all supposed to be talking about Jesus Christ, then is Christ divided? Yeah. Christ is not divided by our own personal stuff. Christ is unified. Amen. Amen. He said, so so was Paul crucified for you? He said, well, Paul, did I go through what I went through for y'all? Yeah. Uh, 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 were you baptized in the name of Paul? <laughs> was you baptized in the name of Pastor Carol? No. Uh, Pastor Bowen? Pastor Duke? Was you baptized in any of that name? No, he yeah. was not. I, if I remember correctly, when we get ready to get baptized, they said, obedience to the great head of the church. I baptized my beloved brother or sister in the name of the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. Now, you can go back and look at that again, but in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And so that lets us know who we baptized in. Yeah. So none of this is about any of us individually. Amen. Paul says, Paul, Paul says, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but, but Christmas and Gaius. These innocents say that I baptized them in my own name, and I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. In other words, he said, God brought me here so that I could just spread the good news where I was supposed to spread the good news, and then I'd get out the way. Hallelujah. As I come to a close, watch out for the flock was of most importance. Aligning the commitment the shepherd made to ensure the security and sanity of the sheep under his care. Paul takes a moment to now sandwich the importance of watching outsiders and insiders between watching themselves or the flock with a final charge to keep watching, telling them in verse 31, therefore, be continually alert. So actually, Paul, Paul says, I need you to always be on guard. Yeah. I, 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 have, I have entrusted you with, with, with a young man who knows and wants to know the Lord. Amen. So that means you're going to have to always be on guard. Because the enemy is going to always try to present you with stuff that's not in alignment with whatever you were taught or initially believed. And now as you are working through God and him helping us through where we are in this season of life, there's some stuff that the enemy will throw at us to try to discredit what God has taught us. Do you not realize how they are trying to unravel the Bible now? Yeah. They try to unravel it. But, but, but as believers, you got to believe the word of God in totality. Yeah. Because if you start to believe any of the other rhetoric, then you start to question everything else. And if you start questioning everything else, you question it all. Right. Yeah. And if I start questioning, then where is my faith? 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He says, he says, continually alert, remembering that for three years, night and day, I did not stop admonishing and advising each one of you. He wanted them to know that he did what he did with them to be in a position to overcome the attacks that were on the front forefront. We teach so that you have the ability to see when the enemy is in your camp. So that you'll be able to say, you know what? Pastor told me to watch out for them. Amen. Amen. And I'm censoring them right now. Yeah. You, your, your spidey sense has got to go off. Your, your spiritual discernment got to be, it ought to be a norm that says, woo, 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 wrong people. Why? Amen. Yeah. Why? Because, because if you cannot discern that, you're going to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. And you end up in that rabbit hole, you'll be trying to figure out why you got stuck there. The enemy again is crafty. So, 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 so he wanted them to know that he did what he did, Amen. So that they would be in a position to deal with these attacks, and it was a task that could uh, could accomplish if they remained vigilant and sober. To do this, Sister Creeper, you got to remain vigilant. Yeah. You got to remain sober. Yes. You can't let other stuff influence you. You got to know who you serve, and you got to know who you are. Yeah. Anyhow, why? Because when I know that, I know that all things are gonna work together for yeah. my good. It, don't, it ain't gonna look good all the time. I'm, 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 let, me, let me help you. I'm gonna promise you that. It ain't gonna always look good, but it's gonna work out for you good. And so some of your hardest tasks, some of those hardest moments that you've been trying to figure out, stop trying to figure it out and give it to God. And when you release it to God, watch how God will move it. Amen. A -a amen. Amen. Well, we don't have to do none of this alone. Over 2,000 years ago, uh, God knew that we were in need of help. Sin has a, a, a grip on mankind, and as a result of this grip that sin had on mankind, only one person could satisfy the terms that were needed to obtain salvation. So God would provide his only begotten Son of Jesus Christ. He made himself of no reputation. Bible says he wrapped himself in the flesh of man. Uh, he became a man. Uh, uh, he comes to earth. He lives as we did. He was human, but he was yet divine. And, and he would go to the Calvary and from Calvary's cross, amen. Bible says he would shed his blood for the remission of our sins, for the forgiveness of our sin. His death paid the penalty that was associated with our sin and put us back in right standing with God. So now we have the opportunity to return on life through our belief and through our, con uh, our constant uh, 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 obedience to God's word. They would take him off the cross, bury him in a borrowed tomb. Uh, on the third day, he would rise. When he rose, he rose with all power in his hand. He ascends into heaven. Now he sits on the right hand, and he's interceding on our behalf. So what we have is what a friend we have in Jesus. And I can take everything that I'm dealing with to him, and I understand that he's preparing me because he's teaching me how to watch out for myself, watch out for the outsiders, and watch out for those inside. Amen? Uh, to walk in the full benefits that God has for us, it's important that we watch ourselves even as we are watching the thems. A amen. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen? We, we are not exempt from messing up. Yeah. We're not exempt from messing up. Amen? But glory be to God that those who truly confess and believe are saved forever. Once saved, always saved is saved. Amen. 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 Stand firm in your faith and continue to serve God in spirit <coughs> and in truth. John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We extend the invitation on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Will there be one this morning? Is there anyone who has heard the word of God, made up in your mind, amen, uh, that, that I need to watch me while I'm watching them, so that I can be in alignment with what God has for me. Will you come on today? Will that be one? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? To follow Will you come? Today? Will you come? Will you come? Will there be one on today? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come on today? Come by letter. Spirits candidate for baptism. Will there be one on today? Amen. We see that there are none here in the sanctuary, but there's always room in the kingdom. Amen. 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 You were blessed by the Lord today. Give the Lord a hand for us. Amen. 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 I think, I think, I think, amen, the Lord is going to take me off watching now. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Don't watch them. We're going to watch you. Amen. 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 But we're grateful. We're thankful uh, for those who join us uh, online, uh, both places. We thank you all for joining us on today. God bless you. Uh, consider this your benediction uh, as we prepare for the rest of the week. Amen. 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 Amen.